Okay, so in my video I posted last week, I went over how I take my Instagram photos and looks in the video I had like a 30 second section where I had like a, a speed up of how I edit my photos but I didn't really like explain how I did and I asked if you wanted me to go through step by step and explain how I edit my photos and pretty much most of the comments below that video were like yes please show us so that's what this video is going to be I don't have anything on my lips right now because uh, that helps me introduce this week's sponsor Deck of Scarlet. So thank you so much for sponsoring this video, Deck of Scarlet. You are the best. Deck of Scarlet is a monthly beauty subscription with its own makeup line. Every month you get a palette or a curated kit. Plus, there's plenty of other makeup products to try too. Their full face palettes are collaborations with popular YouTubers. They've sent me these three matte velvet liquid lipsticks to try. So I'm trying on Siren, Brunch Babe and Moody Mauve. They are saturated with pigment, they don't smudge or feather throughout the day and they have this awesome creamy formula that glides on effortlessly to lock in moisture and dries down to a lightweight finish. My lips feel really, really lovely and velvety smooth. I am so pleased with this product. Now I'm going to get go outside, get a few selfies. I'm going to try to take some cute pics. Um, I'll see you afterwards. Also, I'm wearing this the Decca Scarlet Red lipstick. It looks really cool with this um, polo. This polo is from the Ragged Prince. <gasps> that wasn't even recording. What do you mean? The universe has told me officially not to upload this video. <laughs> I'm going to screen record. Watch me press screen record. Okay. This is the final try to edit these pictures that I took four days ago now. I took 123 selfies, I'm pretty sure. I used like four different areas in the house. Tried to take some on my uh, Canon, but ended up preferring the iPhone photos. So what I do first is when I'm going through the camera roll and choosing photos that I like, I will then rotate the ones that I like and then I will find them in afterlight. So then when I'm going through the camera roll, it's easy for me to see the ones that I like. So then I really like this one here. Afterlight's a really great program because I've, I've been using it for maybe like five or six years now. It's one of the first apps that I downloaded. And because the front camera will uh, flip your photo, I always check to see if it looks better the way that I took it or the way that it was saved. It does look really great the way that it was saved. So then I will then uh, rotate it back and click next and save it back into my camera roll. So then it's at the very end of my camera roll so it's easier to find when I'm editing. So the first app that I use when I'm editing a photo is Visco. Visco is fabulous for just like general editing, like color grading and tones and sharpening. So my first thing that I do is I click exposure and I put it up to uh, 0.5 usually. No more than like one. And then with contrast, I'll do that for uh, another like, like 0.5. And then that's just a subtle difference, just to add a little bit more contrast to the image. I will then sharpen a little bit, um, just to make the quality look a little higher. And then white balance. So if you have a theme um, or like an aesthetic 
with your profile. This is a great way to just keep all your photos quite consistent. So all of my colors are on the blue and pink side um, and that makes a little bit of a difference as well. And then again, the skin tone, you can change it more pink or to more yellow. I always go a little bit more pink because that is my natural undertone. So I look more like myself in the image. And then next, um, the next thing I'd use would be HSL where you can select certain colors. Um, so for instance, if there's a little bit of yellow in this that I'm still not happy with, I can turn the saturation down or if I want to look a bit more tanned, I can put the yellow back up. So that's Visco Dance, and I'll save that, and I'll save that to my camera roll. The next app I go into is uh, Facetune. First of all, I have blonde hair. It's a really brilliant white color, so I don't usually edit the color that much. I used to edit it a lot when I had gray and yellow kind of patchy as I was trying to lighten and lighten to silver. So, um... And I would usually have to do it in Photoshop. Facetune is really great if you just want to make some small changes. So for instance, here it looks a little more yellow than the rest of it. And then in here. And then up the top here. Really subtle changes. I'm not really pressing that hard. Facetune's very sensitive to pressure. So that's just like a small whitening change. And then I'll do a little bit of whitening on my cheek here just to give myself a bit more of a glow. And then I will go into the corners of my eyes and make my makeup look a little bit more dramatic. That's just kind of brought all the whites out a little bit. Maybe I'll do a little bit up here on my brow as well. Cool. So that's whitening done and then I will do a little bit of smoothing. Um, I don't really edit my skin much at all um, because it looks fine as is but I do get rid of this dent at the top here. Um, I think it was kind of a chicken pox scar that turned into something. I'm not sure but that can just go. And then I will tap these acne dents a little bit. Just these random ones here this lip crease that's appeared somehow and then these ones I'll just tap them lightly and just make them a little less dramatic. When I put a filter on at the end most of the skin will be smooth anyway so it's fine and then details is the next one and I will do details a little bit under the eye um, on the front of my eyebrows just to make them look a little bit more feathery if you want your anything to look a little bit darker, um, you can always tap the detail. So I've done very subtle changes here and then I'll put the detail on the bit of jewelry there so it stands out a little bit more. That can stand out a little bit more again. Yeah, and then this leads now to the biggest change is the reshaping. Now, my hair looks great, but it also looks quite flat. Um, it can always look better, and I look a little bit sad, so we can just, like, cheer my face up a little bit. First things first is I'll make my hair look a little bit bigger. So I will make sure I stick to reshape and not refine. Um, reshape picks up more surface area. And then you just got to make sure you don't make any changes to the background and just and so move in the direction that the background image is in. Um, and then if you want to make your hair look bigger on the top, just bring your forehead down like a millimeter um, and then bring this up a smidge and then you'll make that whole part of your head look a little bit bigger. See how much better does that look? It just sits so much nicer. So I pretty much just like fill my hair out because when my hair is wet, it's two strands of hair and that makes me sad. So if, if in images I can make my hair look a little bit fuller and happier, I will do that. And then the next major change I make is um, this area here. I'll just kind of lift this bit up here. Yeah, that just sits a little bit nicer and then I'll bring my jawline up a little bit just to make it look a little bit sharper. Well, that was a bit much on that side actually. Let's zoom in a little. So the, 
the closer you zoom in, the smaller the refined details will be. Yeah, does that look better? And that's kind of all the changes I'll make. Well, the jaws moved a little too much, so I'll just bring that back. Yeah, so you see I'm more just like tightening and filling, just a little bit of like pull. So then I will save that to camera roll and then exit out. The next app I'll go into is Snapseed. Snapseed is so good. I was using it before. So you see here there were some signs on this door. I got rid of them and then I, I've, I'm in the middle of expanding this background so there's a little bit of repeating but... Yeah, this app is awesome. Now, there's certain things in this image I want to remove. So I'm going to go into Tools and Healing. So I can get rid of this light switch here. Boop, gone. And then um, there's some food on my shirt. So we will just get rid of some of those crumbs. There we go. That's nice already. And then I'm pretty sure I'm very center. But just in case, just to show you guys, you can expand the background. So you can click Expand. Um, that's like if you're a little bit too cropped in in certain areas or you notice that you're off-center. So I guess my eyes are kind of off-center. So you literally just gently drag this over and it will predict where the pixels are and then um, create that. Isn't that crazy? So then we'll save that. I usually um, use Visco again for filters if I think the image just needs something a little bit more. So then I'll reopen it and then my two favorite filters on Visco is AU5. I never use them at full belt. Um, I'll use them at maybe three or four. So that's three and that's four. They're good if you want to add a little bit more glow to the skin. If you have an image that's looking quite flat and quite dull, this is a really good filter. And then my other favorite filter is a eight. It's just such a pretty cool tone, grungy kind of filter. So we'll do it at three. And that's just added a nice like grade and filter to it and kind of evened out the skin tone a little bit. And then I might put the sharpening up a little bit and that's it. That is the finished picture. Um, I'll then save that to my camera roll. If you think your image isn't exciting enough, you can then go back into Afterlight and you can um, go into these two circle-y like effects area and I like using um, dust. Dust is really nice. Um, if your image feels a little bit boring or a little bit basic, you can just add um, a nice little like touch to it, a little bit of texture. Um, or you can go in this light section. Um, the light leaks are really great. You can make them um, particular colors. So we could turn it red and add these red colors in because that could work quite nicely. And you can move these around. I did not know. You could move them around for so long like this. Woo! You can do really fun, cute things with this. And then I use these all the time for some of my photos. They're just so cute and you can move them around and it's a good time. Same with all these other little lights. You can just make cute little lights. But none of them really suit this image. This image is pretty strong by itself. So that's it. I'll put up the uh, before and after of this edit. I hope you get to use some of these tips. I had a few comments under my last video saying that you guys have a lot of these apps and don't get the same results. So I hope you pick something up from this tutorial. <laughs> it's been a day. Can you zoom me out? Thank you so much for watching this hot mess of a video. Um, I'm glad I finally got it done. Next week's video will hopefully be a pretty cool one. It's going to be a real challenge and I'm going to try really hard to get it done. Um, it's going to be fun. I'm excited. Thank you so much Deck of Scarlet for sponsoring this video. Really appreciate it. Guys, feel free to check out the link down below um, in the description. And thank you so much for watching this video. And...